Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to use the variable declining balance method within Excel in order to calculate the depreciation for an asset. Now if you'd like to get this workbook go to teachexcel.com search for this video tutorial and you can download the workbook there. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to use the equals v d b function within Excel. Now of all the uh, uh, regular depreciation functions within Excel, the VDB function is the best and most useful function. If you watched the um, double declining balance method tutorial on how to get depreciation in Excel, you heard me say a number of times that you shouldn't be using that, you should use the VDB function. So now I'm going to tell you why and why it's better. The main reason being that you can actually switch from a declining balance method to straight line depreciation with minimal effort using this function. In fact, the VDB function will automatically switch from a declining balance method depreciation to straight line depreciation whenever the um, declining balance level of depreciation is less than the corresponding straight line depreciation method would be. Now, if you understood that, great. If you didn't, don't worry about it. The point is VDB is a better function. So let's go ahead and use it. Now I have an asset here that uh, cost us 500 grand to purchase. I'm going to be able to sell it for 25 grand, and I'm going to be able to sell it for that in five years. Five years is the lifetime or the useful lifetime of this asset, salvage value, initial cost. Okay, so I've got five periods, and for this tutorial, I'm going to calculate just the um, simplest example of depreciation. So we bought it on day one of year one. We're selling it on the last day of year five. Very simple. So equals, oh and by the way, later tutorials will be more complicated for calculating depreciation for specific days or months, etc. So equals V D B open parentheses. Now there are a lot of arguments in this um, function, more than the others, so that's what we need to talk about, right? We got cost, that's simple, initial cost, select that, then hit F4 to put dollar signs in front of it, make that an absolute cell reference so it won't change, comma, salvage value right here F4 put dollar signs in front of it comma the life of the asset lifetime five years put dollar signs in front of it F4 comma now we get to some, to some new arguments the start period and the end period well here you don't just put period you have to say when you're beginning and when you're ending to calculate um, or and day one is considered zero so to calculate depreciation for year one, the start period is going to be zero, comma, the end period will be one. So the end period is one, start period is always going to be zero. Assuming you purchase the asset and uh, you want to get it from day one to the end of year one. Now since we're going to be copying this down, we want 0 and 1 to be automatically updated when we go down for every period. So how I'm going to do that is for the start period, simply do this cell, so period 1, minus 1, comma. For the end period, simply select period 1. So what that's going to do is every time I copy it down, it's going to subtract 1 from the period. So for year 2, this will say start period 1, end period two. Now we we'll calculate dep depreciation for year two. Now it's important to make sure that the units for all of these are exactly the same. So I have my lifetime in years, I need to have my periods in years. It's very important to remember you don't want to have little mistakes as a result of that. Now if we hit a comma we get to the optional arguments. We have factor. Now if you omit this argument factor it's going to automatically default to two which will be the double declining balance method. But this time, it'll switch um, to give you better levels so that you can depreciate your asset completely. Um, but if you'd like to change the factor, simply type it in here. So we could do 1.5, 2.25, you know, whatever you want here, you can put that in for the factor. By default, it's going to be two, so double declining balance method. Now, if we change that to, say, three, then comma 
The last one is no switch. Last argument, no switch. Now, no switch simply is going to tell you, or you're going to tell the um, function if you want the depreciation methods to switch, yes or no, basically. If you put true in here, Excel will not switch to straight line depreciation, even when um, uh, straight line depreciation would be greater than the declining balance method. So if you put true in here, you're, it's never going to switch. If you put false in here, or you put nothing for the no switch argument, so false or nothing, you omit it, then it will automatically switch to straight line depreciation at the um, best time. The best time is, uh, like I've said before, when straight line depreciation amount is greater than the declining balance method. So those are the two optional arguments. Most of the time you're not going to have to input them or you'll only input the factor argument. So let's go ahead and close the parentheses on that and hit enter. So we get depreciation for year one. Now all I have to do is double click this quick fill handle to fill everything else in. Let's check a formula, say year four, make sure everything updated. Okay, B9 minus one, B9, we're good. If you're doing this for real, and real money is involved, very important to check everything. Now, why is this better than the declining balance method? Well, I've talked about it, so let me show you. We'll see if we have anything left to depreciate after year five. And we don't. So I've got a simple formula in here, a little bit different than in the last depreciation tutorial. But basically, this just subtracts initial cost or it goes initial cost minus salvage value minus depreciation, like that. Then all of these simply, the last uh, amount left minus depreciation until here, which is zero. So we've depreciated the uh, amount of the um, asset minus the salvage value, completely down to zero. And none of the other methods were um, as good at doing that as this one. In real life, that's going to be different, but you have to remember that for Excel, we're talking about specific functions, right? So my depreciation tutorials so far have been about functions, and that's why maybe the double declining balance method is good for you, right? That's what this is, but then it switches to straight line. But the double declining balance method function won't do that. So the lesson to be learned here is um, you need to understand exactly what your functions in Excel do because it's not always what you think. Um, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm going to put up some other ones in depreciation that are a little bit more complicated but not too terribly difficult. And uh, if you'd like to get the workbook, this one here, go to teachexcel.com, search for the video tutorial. You can download it there. And that's it for this tutorial.